Welcome to Tech London, a show featuring interviews with London's top creative entrepreneurs, startups, investors, design agencies, internet marketers, and freelancers that make up the Tech London online community, which mostly lives on the Slack instant messaging platform. We rotate through both hosts and guests for these interviews, so you have the chance to hear from multiple perspectives on London's tech scene. Hello, folks, and welcome back to another Tech London podcast. I'm loving the little rhythm we've developed here of all our friends and family from around the Tech London universe. And in the studio today is Alex, who some of you may have heard of. Uh, so, Alex, what are you known for and what would you like to be known for? <laughs> well, I'm known for Be More Pirate. Um, I run Be More Pirate. It was a it, it is a book um, that was originally written by my co-pirate and captain Sam Conniff, and he I came on board um, about a year after the book came out, and uh, I've been building this it into. Oh, I hesitate to, to call it a, a consultancy, but it's it's a hybrid of a, between a consultancy and a social movement. Um, so, and I guess I would want to be known as a pirate. That's that's very honest, Jimmy. It's, it's a safe space. We can we can talk about that. <laughs> what one of the, the I, I'm, I love the whole Be More Pirate thing, um, and I can fanboy about that for ages. But one of the things that I love about it is it's the 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 connection of small groups of people doing like regular human beings doing things that are making change. Because it's very easy to go, you know, get excited about some big, well-funded campaign. But in in both the books, there's examples of real life people that we could probably bump into at the bus stop. Mm, mm. doing things um so when you say movement how does the movement feel five years on mm, yeah um that was interesting i was doing a session on movement building and what it means this morning um so for me the, the movement feels as fresh as it did five years ago which is kind of astonishing to me um Usually these things seem to have a lot of a time span on them, but, uh, you know, even just this week, I've had two or three emails from people just explaining how how profoundly the concept of being more pirate has impacted them and given them the courage to really, um, well, basically <laughs> overhaul their entire life, um, which comes. I think Sam and I always felt that came with quite a lot of responsibility to people. Um, the words that we put down in both the books are, you know, are definitely an incitement to some kind of rebellion and I want to treat that with a lot of respect because it does it, it does seem to make people really take action <laughs> um, but I but I think that's what's that's why it is a movement above everything else that it that it does because it it seems to tap into a level of internal motivation and desire in within people um, a kind of unveiling of a new identity and when when you've stepped into that pirate identity it's almost like you just can't go backwards you are then kind of propelled forwards um, into this real unlearning process where you suddenly kind of let go of some of the external things in your life and begin to look more authentically at like what do I believe in? What are my values? Um, what do I want to see happen in the world? And am I going to take responsibility for making that happen? And I just think it's it's such a it's such a profound thing for people um, that even when it's hard and it and it is hard, I won't shy away from that fact. Both Sam and I very much live be more pirate, and we have gone through a lot of personal things and professional things in the last four years that have um, been challenging. But we'd never go back. Yeah, I've, I've, I've watched a lot of that. that it, COVID seemed quite an easy stage for the U2. Um, well, oh, so many questions. So one of the things is in in that, so fear, you know, fear stops us doing things and, and that conversation. Mm -hmm. And then in COVID and lockdown, like fear just got exaggerated in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And is, it, is there anything you've noticed in the, either in, this is a very clumsy question, sorry, Alex, but uh, mm -hmm. the sentiments there. Is there anything you've noticed around the pirateness in lockdown that like served people really, really well? Because something happened for me, but you know, I, I think you'll. Mm -hmm. It's much more interesting if you share your area. Well, I think the first thing is that the veil came down for a lot of people. The mishandling of COVID by the government. Um, 
it simultaneously did two things. I think it, it really, I saw a lot of people begin to agree with our philosophy, perhaps where they wouldn't have done because they were in a fairly comfortable position before COVID. Um, but the recognition that the systems and the institutions and the leaders that we have don't necessarily know what they're doing and that maybe that, that, that so many quite outrageous things were happening um, that this was a moment to actually stand up and challenge. But on the flip side of that, because of the circumstances that we found ourselves in and obviously varied between people, but the levels of um, challenge to our mental health and our um, finances at the time meant that people didn't actually have the necessarily the resilience to do anything challenging um, or what they perceived as, as being able to stand up to um, the system in any way. So it's interesting. And I think that what, the mindset shift doesn't go away. So once you kind of see it, you can't unsee it. You know, if you realize that, um, I guess it's what we call the no one is coming to save you moment. You yeah, you don't really go back from that, but you need time. You need time to um, build up your resources. I suppose build your own sense of personal power. And there's lots of ways that you can do that. And I think the one way that I do that consistently with Be More Pirate and the people in, in around it is that we we just build relationships. We create connections all the time. We listen to each other. We like draw strength from each other. Um, one of the communities within Be More Pirate that I, I'm trying to host very regular sessions for is our NHS Pirates. So it's people, and obviously they suffered most during COVID and our uh, support within the NHS seems to keep growing. So I host these kind of regular sessions for anyone who works in and around healthcare to come and just simply talk about what's going on how they think things could change and really just connect with each other and i hope over time these people can either go off and do things on their own or work together in some way but the more that you hear that other people agree that things aren't quite going as well as you want the more likely you are to to you know eventually find a way to do something about it so i think yeah. Those things yeah that 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 sits that sits pretty well. That that um, I have frequent no one's coming to save me moments, and just when I think I've worked out no one's coming to save me, another thing happens, and I'm like, oh really? Like no one is coming to save me. That's that's a bit scary. What is what? How do you um? So in in things like it, you know, folks, we'll put links to the books in the show notes because mm-hmm. there's, there's loads of examples of groups of people coming together, um, and one. I can't remember which story it is in the second book. Mm-hmm. I want to say it's about the um, the fair trade people, but there's something about the values thing there, mm-hmm. and, it, and it and I was like, oh my god, that's it! Because mm-hmm. so many companies, I don't, and as companies listen to this, go, oh, we better get some values, and yeah. they kind of copy and paste them. And I, I had one. I'm always upset about this. There's, I work with one company, and. I was with a load of senior people and they said, oh, but you're the marketing department. You should write the values. And I, I, I mean, it was my best, most professional moment. I just went off on one mm-hmm. and said, you know, I could, I could send you the values today, but none of you people would believe, none of your people would believe them when the shit hit the fan. And, and, that, and shortly after that, COVID happened. So, but yep. can, you, can you riff it? I can't believe we still have to say this nowadays, but can you like riff on how important that value thing is? Because it gets, it's, <laughs> there's some, there's some, sorry to interrupt, there's some guy that's called chief values officer and you yeah. sneer at that. And I really agree with that. But like, what is it about that? Yeah. I mean, I know exactly what example you're talking about. And I, I talk about this in relation to the, the pirate code because obviously being a pirate is about rule breaking and rule remaking, <laughs> but it's actually sometimes not the rules that you have, but how you make them. So, what you're talking about is values that get set top down where I mean, I've, I've, I've been, I know this firsthand. I've been in this position. I've been in a workplace where I've been brought into a workshop um, with you know six of my very, very smart colleagues working on projects. And somebody has come in and told us here is the new strap line for our company. And here is our, you know, our mission statement, et cetera, that someone else has gone away in words. And someone who has no understanding of the company or the culture and we've come up with something and we all looked at it and we're just like, what is this? Because it, it was so far away from what we we thought was was fitting. And, the uh, you know, um, it, all it does is it breaks down trust. It, there's this huge gap um, between what a company is trying to um, say to the outside world and what is really happening internally often. And I, and I think that, you know, 
most people can just see that it's a vanity exercise, um, which, yeah, which it depends on what the objective of this is, right? So if the company just wants to look good to the outside world and put some nice values on their website, they'll probably achieve that. But if they want to change their culture and really be a purposeful organization, then they're completely failing. So the idea of a pirate code is that you, it's a set of principles that everybody agrees upon to live and work by. Um, as the pirates did. And those have to be created through some kind of consensus building mechanism. So it, usually when we do it, we get people to brainstorm the, the kind of the principles or the things that they want to fight for, the things that they think they stand for, and the principles of how to work together that really matter to them. And you have to go through several stages with this because you don't actually arrive at the right ones usually in a, in a, you know, a quick session. It's something you have to go back to. Um, you, you know, there's often always... Uh, when you've even got the principles down, then you have to look at, well, actually, do we, what do we do day to day that ensures that these principles are really alive in the company? You know, like it's all very well to talk about creativity, but if everyone actually feels really burnt out and like there's no, there's no space, you know, a deliberate space given in your, in your diary to being creative, or there's no real understanding of like how a person gets into a creative mindset you know like what about giving people the space to be artists for a day or something like that um that's often so missed so the second stage is really like going do our do our daily actions actually line up to these principles and then if if that's not happening then then the, the actions and the, the daily practices is what you have to look at so yeah this is i mean i think that's fairly common what you've described um yeah, but, um I'm sure you get asked this all the time, but like, how long does it take to become more pirate in your company? <laughs> and how how do you? Because uh, you know, I get really pumped up about things. I thought, I, like you know, like I was saying before I come on air, when I read a book nowadays, I have to read it like four or five times. It, it's always taken me, you know, like wildly dyslexic. So I only listen to audio, and it takes me ages to get something. And when I get it, I like get it, you know, like okay. full blast, and then. And then I will, but now I wait, but the bit I'm getting to is very often in the past, I've read a book and I can run into whichever group of unfortunate people I'm working with at the time and say like, oh my God, you know, we just read this and we all have to do this. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, fucking hell, let's go, here we go. <laughs> and they all listen patiently for an hour, nod, probably agree with it, but they want to do it. Mm. So, so that, can you riff on that little scenario that I frequently impose on people yeah and i'm going to maybe trip you up on your own question here because um i think i'd probably say this in the book at some point i can't tell you how long it's going to take like there's no there's no formula there's no magic formula for oh if you start if you read the book it's going to take you 18 months to become a pirate like everybody is on their own individual journey the problem is that we're constantly trying to create like these uh, one size fits all formulas or or innovation frameworks for people and, and all all the more pirate is is really a set of principles or approaches to follow and really just then you've got to invest in your own journey on this and appreciate the journey like that's the space that i feel like sam and i are in all the time like trying to let go a bit more of the destination or there being an end goal to all of this and recognizing this is a kind of a way of being um in how you do everything and and that is just something you, you know you keep on following and i think you know, Every time you get to a level of pirate, there's probably a new layer to uncover. It's a bit like an onion. You, you, you are uncovering layers of permission to give yourself, um, because it really depends on your, you know, what to what degree of conditioning you've had in your life based on work and school. And some people, you know, feel a lot freer than others, and some people um, feel, you know, that there's there's not a lot they can do. And I, I kind of try and say this when we're doing um, events and workshops and stuff that it's be more pirate. It's not be a pirate. So you don't reach peak pirate necessarily. You just are trying to edge yourself down a spectrum that feels good for you. Don't compare your risk taking to another person's risk taking because their level of privilege in terms of taking risks might be different to yours. And I would never say everyone should go out and do the kind of things that Sam has done or it's very different. So it, this, this is what I meant at the beginning about it being an internal thing, first and foremost, this, this idea of an inner rebellion, um, because you have to work out 
what pirate looks like for you to an extent and you'll know the moments when you've done it and sometimes people are hesitant to share their stories on that because they're like oh it's not big enough and it's like it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter it's it's what feels like a a, an, a step out of a norm a bolder step for you so yeah that, that i that's lovely the um i, I don't know you know the, like the 16 million books i cram into my day um somewhere someone said something like that's relevant to you or that you know just get on with it so mm. you know i always I've, I've been paralyzed by you know i've got to have the best website the best podcast the best journal the best you know like no one cares you know <laughs> um and yeah, it's taken years of going to meetups and seeing other people and i know you know i think i'm supposed to be like Brené Brown, but you know, I've done like thirty years of empirical <laughs> research on vulnerability, so and I'm never going to. So, why do we need to be like that? And um, what is if this is not too personal, Alex? What have you had to um, struggle with becoming more pirate? What, what what did you need to let go of? Yeah, you know, like fuck it, can I? Um, you know, stop worrying about this and. Yeah, there's there's two things really. The advent of being me joining Be More Pirate is I I left a job I've been in seven years and I left a relationship that I've been in seven years at the same time. Um, the job thing came second because I I'd been offered the job with Be More Pirate, but it was going self employed for the first time. So there was two kind of <laughs> very uncertain, felt quite risky moves to make, and obviously let going of a long term relationship and it wasn't a particularly <laughs> it was a difficult one. Um, so that and there's all kinds of implications that came with with that at that point in my life around what my life would look like for the next decade or so. And I had to I just had to trust myself with that, um, that what I felt was more important than what the external perception of my decisions was. So that was super important. And I think the other second thing that's come since I started being more pirate is what I've realized about being um my generation particularly, I consider myself millennial if you want to go into those kinds of labels. But I was very much brought up on a very um, uh, sort of uh, productivity heavy, achievement heavy um, kind of culture. Like, you know, I went to a grammar school. I was told to achieve a lot of things. I did always very well at school. My parents are wonderful, really, really encouraging and supportive, but they are also incredibly productive people. Um, and, you know, really taught me the value of hard work. But I've realized I've had... I find it hard to let go of that and I've probably had burnout at least twice now um, where I've had to just take months off at a time because I have internalized the feeling that my value comes from how much I produce rather than just how I am and and that's I mean I'm not there now but that was something I've really struggled to let go of and unravel and recognize as well that, you know, things like the financial crisis, these big external events that happened in the world at a time when I just just come out of university and was expecting to be able to get a good job. Suddenly that the pool was, had shrunk a lot. And I, I kind of w experienced for the first time not being able to just climb up the next rung of the ladder immediately. And n at no point in that, at them, in that moment when I was 20, did I think, Oh, Something's gone wrong in the system. Like, I didn't think about, oh, maybe, maybe it's the banking system and the way that we're bailing out banks is not, is not the, uh, is, is not an appropriate response. Um, I just thought, well, I need to, in, I need to work harder to make up for this shortfall. And I've since reversed my perception on that, that, um, I, you know, it, the system, we're running up a tread hip, treadmill and we've got this again with this cost of living crisis. So many people are running up a treadmill thinking that they're going to be able to get to this sense of security that is actually inaccessible based on the way that the system is structured. And that pisses me off if you don't mind me swearing. So um, that's been my kind of unlearning journey or, or, or where I've um, or what I'm still trying to let go of through Be More Pirate. But I would be nowhere if I didn't have this this pirate philosophy behind me that that was cool there's um and you can swear as much as you like um the so that that leads really nicely i didn't even plan that folks because i think there's a lot in the pirate the be more pirate ethos 
that is more relevant than it's ever been today. And there's themes around, you know, at the beginning of the book, um, it's either you or Sam talking about the heated toilet seat. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that sounds, that's a great, that's a great anecdote. So, you know, I have been to so many events over the years, either either I worked for them when I was in the event industry or been to, you know, a well-intentioned, well-meaning thing. There's, there's, I can't remember the name, but there's a club in Mayfair that is for social changes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It might even be that where he was where he was talking about. It's conduit and it's moved to Covent Garden. Yeah, the conduit. Um, and, and I challenged the, just the, the, the community manager was on a co-working panel and I said, you know, you're a conduit, you know, it's really, really well intentioned, but it's a lot of, you know, people sitting around drinking Laurent Perrier Rosé talking about changing the world instead of, you know, wandering around happily trying to help people. And she, and she was, I can't remember her name, otherwise I'd credit her with this, but mm-hmm. and she's like, you know, you're absolutely right. There is a bit of a problem with how we feel about things. Um, so there's a lot of that going on. And, you know, Sam, it's Sam who says that. He says, you know, like, I was like the 19th white male person on the stage talking yeah. about how we can change the world. And using that, I think we both use that position very well. And there's this cost of living crisis. And this time, I don't think anyone's coming to save any of us. And there's this line which we talk about a lot in Tech London and in, in the co-working assembly about, you know, business can change the world. And I've never known a group of people that are more alert to doing good with their business and not screwing people over. Yeah. And I, I'm, so I'm feeding you everything you want, I want you to say. Um, <laughs> what, what, can you can you tidy that up a little bit more professionalism than I did over there, please? Well, look, I mean, I would also say I have sat on that rooftop on the Conduit Club drinking rosé with Sam, and we enjoyed it very much. Um, <laughs> I say that because I mean, like, I don't believe I don't believe in this necess- I mean this is a pirate idea like they still had a good time you know like I like having uh, I don't need to feel the need to be self-sacrificial all the time in the pursuit of good however we are very very I'm very very clear about what I'm doing when I'm doing those kinds of events or things like building relationships with people um across the kind of social change world is incredibly important to fuel our our movement and I spend an equal amount of time um, and Sam does too, and he, whose roots are very much, you know, supporting young people across London, it is to spend as much time with people who are working more directly in communities, like seeing some of the problems that um, are facing society, like much more up front and centre, so that you're always close. Like this, I think I say in the book, that proximity is often the problem. We become far, far too removed from the problems, um, and then we become a bit, you know. You can veer into Acad- that. academic. You can, yeah, you become too academic, or you become, you know, you veer into that kind of more smug kind of <laughs> purposeful um, business world. But I, yeah, so I think it's the, the critical point here is to keep yourself humble and spend time with a wide variety of people, um, and 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 get close to a wide variety of experiences as well. I think that's very much what, what Pirates is about. So um, that's that's probably how I'd... How I'd uh, that, that, that's, that's, that's very accurate because you can... That, that's one of the things about um, co-working space. It's, it's, it's dramatically better nowadays, but, mm-hmm. you know, about five years ago... There was, there, there's a, I, I talk about it a lot in this group. There's a... There's a, there's a Facebook group for freelancers, UK-based freelancers, and there, there must be, I don't know, 12,000 people in it nowadays. And Ed, one of the founders, once a year, puts a post in there saying, what do you think about co-working? And for like five years running, people would say it's where the next Mark, the next white male Mark Zuckerbergs go to start their tech startup <laughs> and, and then everyone goes no it's not i'm in this co-working space it's really lovely and we do this and you know i make this and this and this um and the, and the perception is like very remo- removed from the reality but then you yeah. know sp- go on. i'll go back to what i said at the beginning to you um i think maybe before we started recording which is um but these kind of co-working spaces or office environments of any kind can become incredibly self-referential when you only have the same kinds of people who do the same kinds of things in there. 
um, talking to each other. And you've got to, so you have to be very deliberate and very conscious about inviting in diversity. And the truth is most, a lot of people are very afraid of diversity because it's kind of uncomfortable. And I, this happens a lot with Be More Pirate when I host meetups. I just allow anyone to sort of come along and, and sometimes we will get some quite different and difficult views in there. But because we have created a pirate code at the beginning where I, I don't really care who, who people are or where they come from, but I do care about behaviors. Um, there's got to be a level of respect um, of sort of, of boundaries around certain things and how we treat each other. And so long as you have those, this kind of code in place, I think it's kind of, it, it, it's much easier to handle like the conflicts of opinion that comes when you really do appreciate and um, invite diversity. And I, and I say diversity, I don't want anyone to interpret it in terms of like, oh, I just want to get people from different, you know, ethnic, ethnic backgrounds or different, um, you know, just having gender mix and things like that. It's actually about life experience. It's about where people have come from. Um, and I want people who've had, you know, a lot of the people that in Be More Pirate who've um, experienced, you know, have disabilities of some kind or, you um, just come from a different part of the world um, and have and therefore have a completely different lens on, on on problems that we're discussing. Like we've got to try to really embrace that um, in a different way. So it's not easy <laughs> for community managers or co-working manager spaces. Like it's not easy, but it's, I think it's um, how we're going to solve some of the difficulties we see emerging on social media where you get such, um, such, I mean, Tension's not the right word. It's more than that. Um, real conflict. I, I saw. Um, I was. I, I don't like football. I guess I don't like football. I'm just not interested in football. But I. Um, I jumped on the. Um, the whole Gary Lineker thing. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> I. The, the way. <clears throat> the point I want to make about that is the way what he said was blown out of proportion into what he actually said. He actually said, like, language not dissimilar to yeah. 1930s. And I really, really, really agree with that. Mm. His, his observation around the language that uh, the government used. Mm -hmm. And then, I know, I was reading the thread for, I just don't do this. It's, I know, I remember why I don't do this, but I was reading Ian Wright's Twitter thread and Gary Lineker's Twitter thread mm -hmm. and, the, and the comments below. And some people are just so, like, it's like a chuck, it's like a, are you allowed to say Chinese whisper? Like Chinese whisper going mm -hmm. around? Mm -hmm. it, like, it, it's, it's terrible. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I I agree. I don't think it's the right setting to have those kinds of conversations. No. Um. So what is after? So it's five years. Where is Be More Pirate going, and how can people get involved other than just buy the book, which I highly recommend. <laughs> yeah. So um, ways you can get involved are um, I do host regular sort of meetups on um for for anyone who wants to just know more about be more pirate who wants to talk about how they're trying to be pirate um so that i haven't actually got one upcoming but I, I tend to do them sort of monthly there's a link from the website to our meetup group um uh if you if if it's a company um we run workshops for companies um or you know i can i sort of can do like mini talks and things to just explain the concept um and kind of get people like do a provocation or pique their interest in it um there's also like a kind of like community map and things on our website for other people for kind of um, finding out who else is in the network. Um, if, I, um, if I have a company, Alex, yeah, and I get all ex you know like I was saying earlier, and I get all excited about being more mm. pyro. What is your recommendation of? Yeah. Do I do I, do you come in and do like a twenty minute key, keynote for breakfast, or do you like sit around in my office for a year and then um, inject everyone with pirate juice? <laughs> well, it totally depends. Um, so the first thing I do when anyone asks me about doing a work with the company is I have a call with them to ex understand the company and where they're at. You know, there's huge, huge var variations in in what people really need, and I have to assess the kind of. Um, yeah the, the, the current situation and current challenges first but uh, um what where we're trying to go with this because we've done lots and lots of you know can do a 30 minute talk to to the team we can do a three-hour workshop and that's been the most in-depth intervention we've done so far but 
where are we, Sam and I are trying to take this um, is we're, we're developing a four month long program, which is really an immersion in Be More Pirate, because having done the workshops for four years, we've we realized that whilst it can sometimes provoke like a, a, a big change, and it certainly does within individuals to create real transformation for a company, you need consistency and you need accountability. You need to practice what it means to be pirate. You need but courage takes practice. So. I want, and also we also get asked to come into companies based on their agenda, and we want to bring people into our agenda a bit more, where you're really, really have this kind of immersive experience in what it means to be pirate. Um, and I think that would be a lot more exciting. I think it would get much, it will get much better results. So we're trialing this with a client right now, um, and it will, yeah, it'll just uh, um, kind of it. Like be, we'll keep iterating on on it based on on the results that we get, and I also want to very much take this to young people. So I spent a lot of time last year developing a, a kind of longer term program, probably more like eight weeks this one because of um, time spans for university students, but kind of creating something for eighteen to twenty five year olds, people who are about to go into the workplace, uh, equipping them properly with the kind of um, attitude and skills to be able to go in there and appropriately challenge what needs to be challenged um, not you know get fed up and quit within a few months which I think is certainly something that's happening at the moment um, giving them the kind of ideas and tools to, to figure out how they navigate through the kind of dynamics you're going to get in a workplace and how you can actively meaningfully be the initiator of change uh, that's a Something you learn by osmosis, I think, is, is, is there's it's such an important thing for like young people to be led. Not not not. I'm trying to be polite about career officers. You know, we should do this versus. You know, there, there, there's a there's a course I know, and the the object of this online course is for people to learn how to run a business by paying two hundred fifty dollars for this course, and then decide whether they want to go to university not go to university, rack up loads of debt, and then go, what am I going to do with my life? Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm like all in on, and there's programs that run around, you know, a lot of stuff we do that are helping guide young people in, you know, a meaningful life and career, mm. not, you know, making them wear a tie and get by there in the 1950s still. Anyway, where, where's the where's the best place to find you online, Alex? Um, so... Probably our website is the hub of all Be More Pirate um, information. So that's just be more pirate dot com. Um, also on um, Twitter, Instagram, um, LinkedIn. Um, it's just at Be More Pirate. Um, it's pretty pretty easy to find, and I'm also on all of those too. Um, yeah. Yes. We we will we will put links in the show notes to that. Um, thank you very much for your very valuable time today, Alex. And ladies and gentlemen, we are um, we run every weekday. There's a link in the event channel in the Tech London Slack group. Every weekday from ten till twelve, we run a writing group in a London co-working space, which is free to go to, and it's a great way to get your work done and meet other people who are doing anything from like writing their dissertation to their sales letter to their email newsletter or or a poem and we've been running this in co-working spaces for like since 2015 um and people have written books journalists turn up to it musicians and it's an epic way to get out your kitchen or bedroom and go and meet other people on the same path as yours it's free to go to and it's on meetup we'll put a link in the show notes alongside alex's meetup group and all the other bits there Thank you very much for your time. See you in the Slack channel. Take care and be careful out there. It is a jungle. You've been listening to the Tech London Show. If you're interested in joining the community or even making an appearance on this show, make sure you join our Slack group over at techlondon.io. Till next time.